and just feel from your heart. Do you really have experienced God's love? Because we must have experience human love. But how does the soul feel when the soul experiences God's love? And how many times have you experienced? How many moments have you spent in God's love? You know, there are beautiful stories of um, the story of Mira. Mirabai was a very, very beautiful soul. At a very young age, she saw a wedding procession going. And that moment, something deeply touched her heart. She asked her mother, what was that? And her mother said, it was a wedding procession. And that moment, something deeply touched her heart. And she decided, not just decided, she felt that she had a deep bond with God. And from then, at that very young age, she got wed to God in her heart. And she could only think about him. She could only think about God. She could only see God. And she brought God into her every action not just only when, when she sat in the prayer that she remembered God. He was always around her. And of course, I'm using as English language, I'm referring to God as he, but you can actually also think about she, no worries. So she felt God around her, with her, when she ate, when she slept, when she walked, when she sang, when she danced, in every of her action, she was completely merged in God's love. And people who saw her, they said she was completely mad. But she didn't bother because only she knew the love what she was experiencing. Right. Because this was not something physical that she experienced momentary, but it was a spiritual love, a love that was so infinite, a love that is so eternal, a love that completely drowns the soul, takes the soul into another dimension. A love that completely liberates the soul. And so she was, because she was in such love, she would just sing and dance because every time she would feel him. And so the same she experienced from God too, because it cannot be one way, no. When I remember, when I experience, when I get in touch with God to experience that love, I'm experiencing. I'm experiencing his love in an unlimited way that I don't want to skip. I don't want to lose it. And that was her love. And finally, at one point when her husband was too tired of her because she was just in love with God more than him. 
And so at that point, he said, okay, then go to God. Take this poison. But the magic was that when she looked at the poison, she still saw God in love. But it's not that he was in, in that poison, but that love was in her eyes, in her heart. And so as she was looking at it, she just drank it, but nothing happened to her. The power of love, God's protection towards her. And so that's one story that I very closely read and felt Mirabai's life and her love for God. But I'm sure there must be so many such in the world who had that genuine, that deep love, that genuine love for God. Not the love based on my desires. I want. No. No. But the love that was so unconditional, so real. And so do you feel such, such love for God? And do you experience the same from God? Or do you only love him when you want something? When you need something? So yes, that sort of love. No. You know, we, uh, Sister Mad, we, we uh, um, you know, now that when you speak is, you know, some, so many good, good things happen in life, you know, to individuals. I mean, many, many individuals say, oh, maybe because I did something good, that's why it is happening to me. But in reality, it's not that. It is, you, you, you do it whether knowingly or unknowingly. But it is the it is done through through God, and Absolutely. you don't you at that time you don't really kind of realize it. But while you like when you're talking and you you know you uh, think about it, and it comes that it it wouldn't have been done without it. Mm. You know, so this is my my experience now. I mean, I oh. I always say with whatever it happens, I always say it is God's doing, you know, mm. I, I, you know, whatever it is, I'm an instrument when he thinks it is that, but that is because he shows that kindness and love for one, one, you know, so that, that's how I feel. Mm. Beautiful, very beautifully shared. Thank you. Very beautiful. That is so true that, you know, that's why there is this word, which is very profound title to God. And he's called Karan Karavanhar, you know, the one who does, the one who makes us do. And that is very well said. Sometimes things come to us, are bestowed. It's because not what we do, but of course, there is some sort of DNA also in me that actually God makes me do. You know, and so some sort of purity in me that he makes me do. And so, yes, he's the one who makes me do. He's the one who does it. Um, and so in that love, then I am free actually from ego. You know? And so today we are talking about love is freedom. And so in love, I don't have that um, sort of ego of, you know, like mine or I, or I have done it, uh, which is one of the biggest thing, you know, in body consciousness that we take love in a different way. And so today, this morning, I was sharing with someone that, you know, like when you think about self-love, because that's where it begins, you know, self-love. So I was sharing that when you, you know, when someone asks you, you know, show your photos, can I see you, your photo or, you know, can I see in your photo, what you do, you take your best photo, right? You don't want to just show them any photo like that. Uh, but you want to show your nicest photo <laughs> where you look really the, the best. And so also 
think about it when you look at your own photo, uh, your physical picture. Now, what happens when you look at your best picture? Naturally, you're smiling. You're feeling so happy. Oh, look at me. I look so good, right? So in the same way, just like, you know, that sort of attitude we have for the body, how we physically look, and we love when we look nice. We want to highlight that. But in the same way, also love yourself as a soul. You know, that self-love meaning uh, not just physically doing this, you know, doing certain things because I have love for myself. But go back to that soul, you know, the self, the soul. And, and do you see yourself as a soul and love yourself as a soul? Love the qualities you have. Do you feel the same way? This is the best me. So when you look at your own self as a soul, because the way God sees me is not this physical body, you know. The connection with God is soul to soul connection. It's a soul that he's seeing. I, the light. And I am also connecting to him as a soul because God doesn't have a body like us. So it's a soul to soul connection. And so it's a soul that is beautiful and emerge your most beautiful form of yours and love it, enjoy it during the day again and again, tap into your beautiful self. I have to come out of this body conscious love. You know, you can't even say body conscious love, actually body conscious attachment. You know, love is so pure. Love is such an eternal thing. Love is infinite. Love is invisible. Right? Love is inaudible. And that's why all this connects to God. If you really want to experience love, go to the source of love. God is that beautiful source of love. And the more you are with him, the more you experience this, the more you become an embodiment of that love. And so first thing I asked you is, do you experience God's love? And the second thing is, you as an embodiment of love. When do we even love ourselves? Uh, when we do something beautiful, when we look beautiful, or when we have something beautiful. We love ourselves. But then as an eternal soul, you know, come back to that consciousness. I am an embodiment of love. I am an embodiment of love. Feel it. Feel you have that abundance of love. You know, embodiment is something very beautiful. You're not thinking about love. You're not thinking I am love. You are completely that form. So I have to remove that, that hat of thinking and become and be that. And so this entire month, experience this as you move along, as you walk, as you sit. Feel, feel your best self as an embodiment of love. Like in Hindi, it's called Swarup, embodiment. And see how you feel. You're like radiating with that love. Like, you know, yesterday, somebody was sharing with me. So beautiful. She said that today, like she was saying, that particular day, she decided when I go to work on the way and at work today, entire day, I want to actually share love. Right? I just want to have a love, loveful vision to everyone that I see. And so she said, from home, so she walked to the subway station. And then of course she traveled. And along the way, the, what awareness she had was, I'm actually sharing God's love. 
not even I'm sharing God's love. It's just that that vibration of God's love is spreading. Mm -hmm. And then she was at work. The same thing she did, that the vibration of God's love is spreading through me. And she said at the end of the day, she said two to three people, her colleagues came to her and she said, today you look so different. Today you, I'm feeling like you're a different person. What's going on with you? And, and she was just touched when she heard that. Because you see how our vibrations work. She didn't say a word to anyone. You know, she didn't act. She was, she was just there. You know, bestowing that. And she said at the end of the day, two, three people came to her. And so yesterday morning, she was sharing with me that this is the experience I had and people notice. And so that's what is the soul to soul vibration is. And so when we are sharing love, that pure love, godly love, divine love, eternal love, then others are catching that vibration. I mean, just think if I'm being an embodiment and radiating that love and others are feeling that, just think at what frequency God's love is how powerful and pure and healing God's love is. God's love. Healing. You know, when you feel sorrow or a little sad or disappointed, when someone even puts a hand on your head and they'll say everything will be okay. Or even they don't say it. If they just even caress you like that, right? How you feel? As if all your sorrow is melting. No? Just one gesture or somebody's just there listening to you. Just think about God's love, how healing it would be, how the soul will feel when the soul will really experience that love. It's just melting all the sorrows. It's melting all the pain or it's melting all the unwanted things that the soul is carrying. It's melting the burdens and what the soul is becoming is just free. It's like your sorrow is gone. No, when somebody is like gives love, your sorrow is gone, disappeared. And just think, just being in God's love, no sorrow, nothing physical, nothing can actually touch me. But the point is, we keep forgetting and going far again and again. Why? We live in so much body consciousness that we keep seeking love from human beings. Somebody should love me. Somebody should appreciate me. This thing, somewhere there is a wanting and seeking a desire physically to project myself. And, you know, that sort of desire to get it. And so the moment I want that from human beings, that's, of course, it can never be equal to God. No, that frequency will... There is no frequency even because say if, the, if that soul from whom I'm wanting to have something, that soul is also in search, then how will I get it? Then there is a disappointment, expectations. The list goes more and more, right? So instead of healing, there I'm experiencing more sorrow. Oh, why this the person didn't appreciate me? Or oh, why this person didn't love me? Why this person is not giving time to me? Why the, there is more sorrow, there is more burden. And so really I want to touch the love inside me. If I want to become that embodiment, go to him. 
go to God. The ocean of love, the ocean of love. You know that beautiful song, Tu Pyaare Ka Sagar Hai? Ah, how many times you want to listen to that song and you still feel like you're listening for the first time. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you want to be like ocean of love. He's that ocean of love. Can you imagine there is an ocean of love where it ends, where it begins? You're in that love and you know, you're, you're just... You're just gone. You just disappear in that love. And that's God's love, you know. So it's completely healing what it's healing. It's actually freeing me. It's freeing me from all the unwanted things that I carry, which burdens the soul and which doesn't allow the soul to experience that real love. It's freeing me from waste thoughts. It's freeing me from any kind of anger, animosity, or any kind of enmity. All this, the emotions that we carry, it frees me, right? When you taste God's love, what do you want? Nothing. Even like when, when we love, I mean, there is, any physical love, like, you know, when, it, when a mother sees her child after a long time, the mother doesn't bother about anything. No? She will sit with her child, okay, tell me what's going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> she wants to cook for the child. She wants to be with the child. Pure love, no? At that time, she doesn't want to take phone calls, this, that, nothing. She wants to be with her child. Pure love. In the same way when I am with, you know, God, that pure love, you just want to be. There is no agenda, there is no logic to it. Right? Really, there is no logic to it. I mean, of course, people do talk about the signs of love. But sometimes too much of analyze, analyzing about love. You know, love is very simple. You know that story, the story of Shabri. Yeah. Yeah. Shabri was this old lady yeah, who was so innocent. And she had such pure love for God. So it's a story, right? So one day it's like, you know, God comes to her. She lives in a little hut. And so God comes to, he's on his way. And then he visits Shabari and then Shabari recognizes this is God. And so what she does, she says, I want to offer you something. And so God says, okay. And so she gets um, berries from her garden. She plucks the berries and she gets the berries from her garden. Now what she does with those berries, she doesn't just give to God to eat the berries. What she does is, she says, wait, wait, you don't eat like that. Let me first taste. If it is sweet, then I will give you. You eat. Yeah. Then, of course, they show in that God's brother. <laughs> he doesn't like it. How come you eat and you give it, you know? But that's her innocence. That's her love. And, you know, God says, no. He feels her love. He doesn't, you know, say, okay, you ate, I don't want to eat this. No. But what she does, every fruit she gives to God to eat, she first tastes it. The, the berry, every berry. She first says, ah, this is sweet. And then she gives. And with a lot of love, he eats. And that's love. There is no agenda to love. There is no logic to love your innocence, your purity, you know. So you don't go to God, you know, okay, okay, you know. It's like, you know, sometimes you have to do some work and you'll be so nice to people. And the, sometimes that person can understand your vibe. Oh, you, you, you have some work to do. That's why you're <laughs> too nice. You know, sometimes kids, to, kids come to parents 
you know papa mummy i want uh, and then they show extra love and then mother will say directly she'll say okay what do you want <laughs> right <laughs> like that even god knows our pulse you know if we go with an agenda he knows and we are saying oh you know you are my everything you are my this you are my that he says okay come to the point i know <laughs> right so that sweet innocent love no agenda towards him and it's not that you know there is um, like you know only it's 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 not just a discipline love is not a discipline i do certain things because i want to do because i have love for it you know like like every day morning we wake up early and we sit we sit in remembrance of god to spend some time it's not a discipline okay it's 3:30 it's 4 o'clock wake up now sit no it's done because i have love you see when you meet someone whom you love you want to give your hand you want to meet at a time when nobody disturbs right that's what it is early morning hours why do i sit to remember it's not a discipline it's because i want to sit at the time because i don't have any other agendas nobody's calling me nobody's disturbing me my stomach is not asking for food you know no distractions it's just the quiet beautiful fresh time and i want to spend that time in the same way when i want to listen to his words it's not a discipline but i want to do it because i have love i want to nurture myself with his words because that's the only way i'm communicating i'm feeling god's love right he's showing me you know he's loving me he's showing me a direction right and so love is not a discipline it's a flow right and so in that flow when i'm so close to god he just liberates me he frees me he frees me from all those unwanted things and that's why when someone is in love with god they are just complete like they're they're in their world it's not that you're talking to them i am in my world no 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 not like that they are of course sharing also they're giving also right it's not that but but you know they're not bothered with anything they don't go into unnecessary aspects they don't go into things that would disturb them and disturb others you know what i mean why because love actually the one of the friend of love is detachment you know detachment and love are friends where there is love i am naturally detached from the things that actually bring me into bondage and sorrow detachment says i am with you with love right but then we think love is something else detachment no only when you are detached towards certain emotions you are able to actually love and you are able to feel god's love so detachment is very very powerful right in hindi it's called nyara so that sort of sense of detachment i naturally have because i'm free i'm free from the things that actually caught um make me get trapped in certain emotions i'm free because i'm full of love and so love as we know love never makes anyone dependent if i am making anyone dependent or if i am becoming dependent on anyone for anything that's not love hmm 
Love is allowing myself and others to be in freedom. Absolute freedom. If I'm conditioning or if I'm actually controlling, if I'm putting someone in a box, no, this has to be like this, then I'm not detached. I'm not in love. I lost that love. Right? Also, like, if I'm not detached, if I'm not loving and detached, then I'm also sensitive to everything that I would pick up and I would burden myself. So instead of becoming free, I'm accumulating more. So that's why love and detachment both are so important. And remember, if I am in God's love, if I am in love, I will naturally experience this kind of detachment. And where there is detachment, I'm far from these physical, all kinds of emotions. I'm not in bondage, I'm free. So that's why love actually brings a very powerful freedom. You know, at one point, there is this powerful concept of mukti. Why, why even the souls wanted at some point mukti? Mukti means complete liberation. We want liberation. Why? At some point, the soul even didn't want to even come back in, like, you know, live, you know, like have another birth or uh, not about even birth, like just even not living this life, just liberating. Because of the burden of sorrow. Right? The soul wanted to liberate, lack of love. You know, so why this thing about, uh, you know, the concept of mukti, because we are absorbing everything that's going on around us. And the more we are absorbing, the more we experience sorrow in this world. The more there is heaven, the more there is bondage, I'm caged. But that's why again and again, I have to keep going back to God. God's love, God's love. And go to God because you love him. You know, say I'm in love with God. And when you know love with someone, how your face blossoms. Like that, when you think about God, does your face blossom? Or your face is like, hmm, next thing I have to ask this. <laughs> or, oh God, look, this is happening. Or when I think about him, does my face blossom? I'm like, I'm with you. That is love. That is pure love. Go back to that pure love. Go back to that divine love that frees you from everything. The soul naturally experiences super sense of joy because you don't want to come out of that. You want to be in that. Right? Om Shanti. So anybody has want to say anything, any comments you have? Beautiful. Very beautiful. Mm. And the way you generate love, how do you generate love for God? I guess it comes from belief and uh, meditative connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, visualization of 
that love flowing into you and Mm -hmm. Bringing immense joy within you. And you keep doing it. Keep practicing it till you get into a stage where it just comes naturally to you. Is that how you do it? Um, see, I wouldn't even say love is not a practice i mean of course like my connection is a practice my connection with god is a practice but when you i mean love also comes from understanding understanding god understanding God that he's not just someone who is just there to fulfill my desires. Understanding God that I have a deep relationship with him. And this relationship is such an eternal relationship. People come and go in our life, souls come and go in our life. But the relationship that I have with God is ever, forever, eternal, always, always. There is one soul. I'm always connected. My DNA matches with that soul. And he's my creator, my father, my mother, all relationships. And that's God, right? In every way, he's always there. So when I actually recognize the relationship, then love naturally flows. And so because in relationships, in relationship, you don't have to actually practice. You don't have to, you know what I mean? Like it just flows. So understanding God, understanding your, your connection, your relationship, it's very important for that love to just flow. And so, and in that love, of course, naturally, visualization and all of this are part of it. And so for that, you know, the experience of love comes naturally when you understand that you as a soul have an eternal relationship and all relationships you can experience with God. Also, I guess, understanding what you inherit from that relationship mm -hmm. and the joy that those inheritances bring to you. It's just like, as you say, right, if I'm the child of God, it is my right to ask for inheritance. And then he gives me the peace and the power and, and the so on and so forth, which attaches, which is linked to that relationship. Mm -hmm. While it is, while you don't have a desire, but you also realize that because of that relationship, you're already endowed with the treasures of that God has given you in form of peace and purity and power and love and happiness and bliss, which if you start experiencing it and when you start radiating it, and radiating is a, is a very beautiful thing. It's just like the more you radiate, the more it comes back to you. So. Right. And also it's like, you know, when you're experiencing God's love, you are even beyond, you're going even beyond of what he's giving, um, you know, what he's bringing or what I'm becoming, what I'm taking. You're even going beyond all of this. You're just merged. And that, that, that stage is called like lovely, like, like you're there, you know, you're beyond all of even this, what I'm getting, what is, 
you know, you're just so beyond. It's such a purity. It's such a, such a, you know, closeness and such purity that the soul actually experiences. That's true. Anybody else would like to share? Okay. No one has, then we can just do some few moments of meditation again. Yes. Is, would it be possible for you to share the link of that YouTube or whatever, you know, that meditation we did in the picnic? That was beautiful. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So once again, just allow yourself to sit quietly. And very naturally bring God's form into your mind and heart. The beautiful one. The most beautiful. Light. So look at God's form. You're seeing his beauty, the pleasant light, the being of light. And the radiance of God has such profound, pure love. In his each ray, I can feel love flowing. Keep seeing his form and experience each ray flowing, radiating love. And I, the light, Absorbing all the radiance of love. As each ray of God is touching the soul, I am becoming an embodiment of love.
in this silent space, just God and me. in divine love. Radiating love. And in this space, I don't need anything else. I am full. I'm complete. The same like the divine, ready to radiate love. Shanti. So carry this love with you, keep this love with you, and be the love and be in God's love. And as we experience this each day, again, we'll meet on Thursday with another new topic on love. So thank you so much for joining this evening.